Okay, so welcome. This is just going to be a quick little video. I wanted to share something I've been uh, playing with on the Syntact recently, which is programming effects into the analog effects block. Um, basically, the Syntact can act as a programmable effects unit, uh, both for all the internal synth sounds as well as for external audio that you pass through it. So um, I've been kind of excited for that in uh, j just the concept of creating my own effects seems fun and being able to sequence those effects so that they actually change over time is definitely a big part of that. So um, what I've got here is just a simple kind of chord progression playing on the digitone. It's routing into the syntact. Uh, so first I'll just play it as is. So right now all you're hearing is just the digitone part. Okay, so the digitone is doing, you know, a bit of stuff to it, so you can hear it's not a totally static sound. Uh, but you'll hear that it changes pretty dramatically when I start adding the effects to it. So let's do that. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, I also have a little drum beat going on here. Let's just turn that off just so we're hearing it um, just kind of pure. Okay, so you're not hearing any sound out of the syntact except for what the effects uh, are going to be doing. So this is still just Digitone by itself, and then here comes in the effects. There's the effects off and the effects on. So it's definitely a pretty significant uh, difference. So yeah, I would call this uh, kind of a glitch effect. It reminds me of some like cloud delay type stuff I've heard or freeze delay kind of somewhere in that somewhere in that category. Um, and so we'll go through a little bit of how I made this one. So we're in the, um, the effects now. Let's get out of this mute mode. So we're looking at um, the kind of effects sequencer here. So starting off, oops, there we go. Now we're looking at the effects sequencer. So starting off, um, this is 64 steps long, and I just did every single trick. All right, so the effects is being triggered on every single step. And then um, under the trig menu here, I have the probability set to 32%. So that means only about a third of the time is a trig firing, meaning that the effect only is happening 30% of the time, roughly 32% um, throughout, uh, throughout the whole session. Now on the synth page, um, we have a bit of overdrive applied. On the filter page, I haven't done anything. You see the filter's not engaged at all, so we're not using the filter on this effect. Um, most of the magic's happening here on the amp page. So with the amp page, you kind of actually have to start on the second page to choose your amp mode. So I'm using the AHD mode. And then um, back in here, you can see I have it set to be quite short and uh, with a little bit of an attack onset there. And I'm sending um, a lot into the delay and only a tiny bit into the reverb. So a lot of that, you know, the delay effect, of course, is coming from the delay. Um, in the LFO, I have it set to, uh, well, one of them is set to amp pan, right? So that's just to make the make it swing side to side in the stereo field. And um, that's kind of nice and easy. You can apply that to anything. The other one, though, is kind of the more interesting one that makes it super glitchy. That is applying a random LFO wave to the amp volume. And you can see I have the depth cranked up to max. And then you can choose the speed that sounds good to you. So like, let's hear these together. And I'll play with these a bit. So we can change, increase the speed of our effect here. Get kind of further degradation or slow it down and be a bit more subtle. All right, you can also change the speed of the LFO here. 
is kind of a ratio of these two speed and multiplier that you get to play with. And in order to make this work well, I have the, the amp volume down around half so that it has plenty of kind of room to play around in. You can see if I turn this way up, the effect doesn't do as much because it can't change that amp volume. It has nowhere to go, it has no, nowhere to move up. So turn this down, give it a big range of variability. And then of course you can go into the delay and play with these settings as well. Looks like I haven't, this is all just default settings. But you can hear if we uh, didn't use the delay at all, what that would change. I'm bringing the delay back in. That's pretty cool. Let's bring in some of the other tracks I have here on the syntax. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me pause this and show. So um, this track on the syntax here, number seven, I have as just this kind of staticky noise sound. So just kind of a background texture type of thing. And applying this glitch effect to that is really satisfying. To, this is going to be a little bit much, but just to demonstrate, if I turn on every single track, which is going to be kind of too much stuff happening at once, um, you can also play the effects mixer. Uh, well, I'll just I'll just demonstrate. So, like, turn on every single thing. Let's play everything without effects first. So I'm going to go in here, turn off effects for everything. So currently, the effects are doing nothing. Okay. And now I can selectively apply effects to different things, so like glitch it all out. Lots of fun to be had there. Cool, let's go, um, let's just switch to a new track and just build a very similar effect kind of from scratch. Um, I think that's often a good way to learn it. So let's switch into, let's see, where do we in bank B? That's fine. Um, let's switch into pattern two, should be empty. Okay. Yeah, that's empty. And let's go into the effects here. So this is starting from the blank slate, kind of all the defaults. So yeah, first thing I'm gonna start with is on the amp page, the secondary amp page, to choose my amp mode. And I want it to be in that AHD attack hold uh, decay. Set, give it a little bit of attack time, and then decrease my hold time by a lot. The idea is I want it to just grab kind of a little snippet of sound, right, um, out of whatever is playing. Um, let's have that delay in there. 
and maybe halfway a little bit of reverb and then some depth and then kind of the yeah really the secret sauce to this one was the LFO set to amp volume right there on a random wave with a lot of depth and we'll just try it like that for now um, let's just put in a real no, let's just keep going with this. So I have to, since this is a brand new one, I have to tell it to allow the sound to come in. Okay, so it's that same chord progression from the Digitone coming over. Let's just see how, how far we've gotten so far. Cool. So you can hear it's doing that um, glitchy thing, right? But what we haven't done yet is uh, to sequence the effects at all. So let's do that. Make sure we're in our effects mode here and do, yeah, everything. Oh, we're only on 16 steps right now. That should be okay, actually. Turn up overdrive a bit. There we go. Yeah, you can also do this. Um, select if you want it to route pre-effects or post-effects. Like if you want it to be able to bypass the effects with your incoming audio. That's an option. I don't want to here, but... And then let's set this trig probability down. And maybe the length up a bit. And just play with things. Play with our delay specifically. Get ping pong, some feedback. See if I do too much reverb here, it just kind of washes everything out. So. Very minimal on the reverb. In fact, let's set this bandpass filter on the reverb. And then for a little more stereo width, all I did on this other one was set the amp panning on an LFO. Certainly you could get fancier with that, but that's a quick and easy little trick. I think that's quite lovely. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I think this is, uh, I think, a good little platform to start from in creating these kind of, you know, glitchy delay cloud type effects on the Syntact. Um, certainly, there's plenty, plenty more complexity to add, but uh, sometimes keeping it simple is what you need. All right. Have fun.